есть. It has been an absolute dream for me to come to Spain. About two months ago, my husband and I decided to book a three-week trip to Spain to see if we would actually be able to live here long-term for at least about a year because that's always been something that I've always wanted to do. And in this video, I'll walk you through what I would do to get to know the city to see whether I can call this city a home in the future. And more specifically, I want to take you through the vibe what the local foods are how to get around the city if the, if things are accessible and basically trying to live as a local as much as possible even as a tourist here so that I can see what the city has to offer and at the very end I will share my personal thoughts about the city and then give my opinion whether this is a place where I can see myself living in After spending about a day or two in Barcelona, here are my first impressions. First city impressions of Barcelona. Been here for a total of two days. This is my one first full day. Got here yesterday and it has a lot of character. It has so much personality in terms of like the texture of the city. There's a lot of things going on and everywhere you turn, there's kind of new things happening. So you'll see like a plaza and then you'll see park. You'll see so many things within the distance of the city. Cities are old, the streets are a little bit dirty, but I do see that they put some effort into maintaining it. I see a lot of cars where people are cleaning, but it's vibrant, it's alive. So it took me a little bit to get used to the imperfections of the city. It's something I wasn't kind of used to because living in Toronto, everything is so rigid and organized. The streets are squares, whereas here in Barcelona, everything's circular and you just never know what street you're going to end up with, especially if you're a newcomer or if you're a tourist and you don't know where you're going. So with that note, I wanted to talk about how easy it is to get around the city. So while we were there, we used the local public system so we didn't use any taxi or uber we actually just used their metro system it was a bit of a learning curve but because we have that experience from toronto it's very similar trying to figure out how to transfer getting to one place or another we had google maps throughout our entire stay so that was very nice so as a side note if you are traveling and you want to make your life easy get a local sim card so for us we paid about 50 euros for 50 gigs of data which was pretty good and we are able to use the sim card all over europe so their metro system is connected to the bus system and there's basically different zones in the entire barcelona and you can purchase different passes that will able to get you, give you access into those zones. 
depending on pass that you buy. Other than that, the city was very accessible in terms of biking and walking. So there were bike lanes all over the city. There were scooters. I noticed that electric scooters were very popular. So all in all, I found that you can get to one neighborhood from a different neighborhood in a very short period of time. We stayed in a neighborhood called El Born, which is about 15 to 20 minutes to the main city center, which is around the Gothic Quarter, kind of the most touristy area of the city. So that definitely was important to know and I thought it was very good. Hello, good morning. Look where we are. Just got out of the subway and it's right here that La Sagrada Familia, which is one of the most popular tourist spots in Barcelona. We're going to get some nice photos and go from there. Okay, so after figuring out that it was easy to get around the city, it was now time to know what the city has to offer or, you know, what are the things that we can do here as a tourist and also as a local. So for us, because of the purpose of this trip for personally we didn't really do a lot of touristy things so we just kind of like walked in the area so for example for la sagrada familia we went in the area took photos from the outside but we didn't actually go in uh, we did go into park well because that was a long walk that we did not know it was going to be that long and hard hey pretty girl it's this way We decided to go to a place called Park Well, which is about half an hour walk. It feels like a lifetime because it's an uphill city. Nobody told us that. Okay, so we're trying to find where Park Well is. We think it's over there, but we don't really see any indication of where it is. But we are now basically in Guel or Park Guel and it has a very scenic view of the city of Barcelona and also this is kind of what is in my background. Hopefully you can see that but it's a very nice greenery and just different kind of trees. Stayed for about like half an hour, saw the scenery came out and then walk more around the neighborhood. So in that sense, there's a lot of neighborhoods to get to know. I think there's at least five or six that each neighborhood has a very different character. So Gothic Quarter, as I mentioned, is kind of where the main spots are and or the main touristy area is. So everything's like very cobblestone. Like when you think of Europe, this is what you would think. Whereas let's say in the neighborhood called Gracia, where Parkwell was, it was more hilly. It was more residential. That's number one in terms of getting to know or what to do as a local or a tourist, really get to know the different neighborhoods of Barcelona. The second touristy thing that we did was experiencing the cable car scenery. So we went up to the castle of Montjuic and to get there you had to take the metro station and find the tram to that it would take you to the cable car to get to the castle of Montjuic. And in this castle, we did not go in again, we just kind of walk around the area. We saw a very scenic view of the port of Barcelona, which was very cool. Third thing, the beach is where the locals hang out a lot and I can imagine tourists as well. But it's nice because even at nighttime, it has a very good vibe. It has, it's cool and it's windy. Bands playing in the beach, there's people dancing, uh, lots of people skate rolling and also dancing with their skates. 
so that was really cool to see as well so non-touristy or touristy thing that i did is i did go shopping so we went to a place called las ramblas which is one of the shopping districts in barcelona and in here you can see domestic and international brands that you can kind of go in and see I did buy something because I didn't bring that many clothes in this trip so that was really nice to experience as well it can get really busy especially in the summer but you know you just have to kind of pick your battles when it comes to this kind of thing good morning we're gonna go for breakfast upstairs let's go <laughs> If you want to live in a country, you need to like the food that they have to offer. And at first, we, my husband and I, were we were very concerned about the food situation here because he has a very specific dietary restrictions and we didn't know if the city would offer that and it turns out they have so many good food options here that my husband and I felt like it was kind of better than Toronto so we ate it's kind of bad because the most you know common thing to do in an area is to experience the local cuisine so in that sense Spain has a lot of ham or it's famous for Iberian ham, which is pork, but my husband and I don't really eat pork. But we found a lot of other options in terms of meats and vegetables and all of that. So that was really good as well. So it is now day four, and we're gonna go to eat some paella, which is a traditional food of Spain. So this is the paella. I got the mixed dose, which has seafood and chicken. Tasty. Hot. As for the prices of the food, we found that it is a little bit cheaper than in Toronto, which was really good because you can find really good stuff you can go eat outside without breaking your bank, obviously depending on what your income is. But if you eat a lot outside and you were to switch that from Canadian or US dollars to Spain, you would save more money and you can actually enjoy the food more because we found that the food here is fresher and it's actually much better. So that was also very surprising to us. We didn't actually do groceries here because I feel like I'm still on vacation and I really refuse to cook while I'm on vacation. Arc de Triomphe which is kind of like the Arc de Triomphe of Paris and even the park itself it actually reminded me of um, the Paris park so this whole area right now where we're in it reminds me of Paris you go to the park and you see people that have a boat people doing yoga and it's just really nice So now I want to talk about my personal thoughts about Barcelona, about what this city has taught me and the big question. So first things first, I think this city has so many things great to offer. At first I was like, this is not it. But as I spent more time and got to know the city, I slowly kind of fell in love with it. Estamos en 
and it was just such a vibrant city where everywhere you turn there's something so different that's going on and I think that's kind of says a lot about the city they have this reinvention that that one of our tour guides during a walking tour said that the city has a theme and that's always reinvention where so many bad things has happened in the past but they're trying their best almost to kind of work around that or or figure out what else you can do you know with whatever we have right now despite what happened in the past and i think that's such a great fits with my personality you know it's i'm trying to always reinvent myself and i'm always trying to and i'm always kind of a work in progress and that really reminds me of la sagrada familia if you didn't know it's a building that is not finished yet after it has started about 144 years ago so that's just a, such a great metaphor for the city being always a work in progress and that's something that i totally resonate with as i've said the city has a bit of everything so there are historical sites there's like the young and hipster vibe there's a city vibe there's something for everyone for whatever type of person that you are and this really fits with my personality too because being the multi-passionate I am, I can kind of dip into different interests that I have for myself and kind of really fully embrace who I am, being interested in so many things and this place is really nice for that. This place is definitely not perfect and it has a lot of imperfections, but I don't think it is trying to be perfect too. I think it's, uh, it's a very old city, but it, I feel like it's young at heart. And I think that's what makes people fall in love with it. So now for the big question is, can I see myself moving here? So the simple answer is yes, but I'm exploring other cities. Right now I'm in Porto and I am going to explore the city. And also I will be going to different cities like Lisbon, Seville, Granada, Madrid. And Madrid is something that I'm kind of looking forward to because as I've said, I've been wanting to live in Spain for a long time, but not sure where. So that's going to be the next question. I'm excited to see what this city has to offer. And if you like this type of video, let me know in the comments below and let me know what specifically you would want to know or hear when it comes to this kind of videos. I hope that this video resonated with you and that you be kind to yourself and take it one day at a time.